Welcome back. Guess what? We have a video on Jefferson, that crazy redhead known as President Number Three, Thomas Jefferson. This is the actions and presidents of and the Louisiana pur Purchase and a little bit of Madison. So I have a few things I'm going to be asking you to do. So you're going to do a lot of pausing in this video. All right. So basically, we are going to look at whether or not Jefferson is in favor of or opposed to war first. What I would like you to do is answer those questions. So put it on pause, look at the questions, and come up with a plan. Is he in favor or is opposed to war? So if you think it's the first one, you answer the first one. Second one, you answer the second one. And if you're saying, how am I supposed to know, Mr. Chambers? Well, you refer back to the Washington video. Or just take a guess. Put it on pause, figure it out. If you have said that he is in favor of war, you are a winner all right so do these actions make sense though he reduces the size of the military folks why would you do that if you're in favor of the war or a war and he reduces the size of our navy he, re he gets rid of ships he's just like eh, get rid of them you know uh dismantle them they'd be good for firewood i guess you know and what do other countries do when you start taking apart your military and start taking apart your navy ships? Exactly. They start stealing your soldiers. They impress American sailors into military service in their country. Right. And that's not good. And they start stealing our ships. They're like, they can't defend themselves. We'll steal those ships. It could be merchant ships. It could be actual ships for the military but there really wasn't any because he already dismantled them so what are we gonna do Ugh, it's crazy times crazy times good old jefferson so what does he have to do the problem is he is having people other countries impress our sailors into their military service and it is especially the pirates Yes, folks, the pirates. So what does Jefferson do in response to all this impressment and attacks from other countries? Well, he builds a navy. Yes, he destroyed the navy and then he builds a new navy. It is called the Mosquito Fleet because they are able to sail around other ships really quickly and things like that. So they're smaller ships like mosquitoes. They're a little annoying. All right, they don't pack a lot of firepower, but they sure do go fast. All right, so the other ships are big ships, like um, like uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Black Pearl. Uh, all right, so it's going to be a bigger ship, and you're going to have these other small ships going around it, like, da -da 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 -da. all right, so it's going to be getting kind of crazy. All right, we go to war, and we win. We beat the Pirates, yes, folks, and we go to war with Matt. Matt is the Barbary Coast, the northern part of Africa. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Tripoli. Make sure you write those things down, and we're going to talk about that in a map. A map? It's a map, it's a map, it's a map! All right, here is our map. I promised you there would be a map. Um, at the time, there was no thing called Egypt. It's the Ottoman em um, Empire, but, you know, whatever. Um, some problems with our war with Matt. It's like two firsts and an oops, all right? So our, it is our first war on terrorism. These people were terrorizing us. They were kidnapping our sailors into military service. Well, piratey type service. I'm a pirate tire. All right, and it is the first time, yes, first time that the Marines are actually used. Remember, they were created by John Adams in the quasi war with the XYZ affair and all that jazz. All right, so that is what's happening here, the first time. And our oops, our oops is simply this. Jefferson cost us a lot of money, like two to three million dollars, folks. Um, he dismantled the military. He builds it back up. Kind of crazy. All right, let's go to another scenario. Yes, folks, I told you. So we have a, another president, just like John Adams. Now we have Thomas Jefferson. All right, and he's in trouble with France. Yes, so here's our scenario. And figure it out put it on pause and write down your answer the scenario is you are president jefferson you have annoyed a country france with one time with a one who was once an ally and they have an unpredictable military 
leader. All right, Napoleon. <laughs> Get it? Small. All right. Uh, who could use some money to continue his massive war? He really wasn't that small. It's a big lie. All right. Um, how would you attempt to repair old wounds and prevent a future war? So come up with a plan. Put it on pause. Right. You buy Louisiana. Hey. All right. So that's what he does. Um, so the thing is, which political concept does Jefferson favor? Is he in favor of state rights or is he in federal uh, in favor of federal rights? Is he in favor of strict constructionist or is he in favor of loose constructionist? Also, um, you know, was Je Jefferson in favor of the Bank of the United States? Why? Why not? So put it on pause. Take a guess. It's going to be OK. I believe in you. Did you get it right? Yes, folks. Jefferson is a states rights kind of a guy ever since the beginning of the constitutional era. He's like states rights. All right. And then is he a strict or loose? He is strict. He is an originalist. He's like, if it's not in the constitution, you can't do it. All right. He reads it word for word. All right. So he is a strict constructionist, which is a little bit strange in our mindset of Jefferson, but that's the way it goes. Was he in favor of the bank? No, he's totally opposed to it. All right, it's a state rights issue. It's not in the Constitution. It's I'm an originalist, man. All right, so bam. Therefore, take a guess again. Put it on pause. Come up with some answers. Would Jefferson agree to borrowing money from the federal bank? What do you think? The Constitution doesn't allow the president to buy land. Would Jefferson support the land purchase? What do you think? Tell me a reason why. Take a chance. Right! He is not in favor of borrowing money from the bank, but he does it anyway. He is not in favor of buying land. It's not in the Constitution. I can't do that. But he does it anyway. He spends $15 million. Folks, in a matter of three years, he spends $20 million that we don't have. The Federalist Party, they even say that, all right? They would normally be in favor of using a bank. They'd be normally in favor of getting more land. But now the Democrat Republicans are going, we like that. And so they're like, oh, uh, you like it? Oh, we don't like it. We don't like it. No, no, no. We don't want you to do that. All right, so they say, we are asked to give money of which we have too little for land of which we already have too much how about the guy who is selling this land napoleon what do you think he thinks exactly napoleon wants to take over the entire world yet he says i can scarcely oh, i can scarcely say that i cede it to them they are ask me only one town in louisiana new orleans but I consider the entire colony lost, or the colony entirely lost, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Interesting. So, it's like we're living in an opposite world. Why? The Federalists oppose it because the Democrat Republicans support it. That's the only reason. The Democrat Republicans only want New Orleans, yet, you know, to get the whole Mississippi River. That's what they want, just one little city for $7 million. All right. Napoleon had plans to use all this land for farming. Yes, he his original intent was to use that land for farming for his soldiers so he could feed his troops when they take over the Western Hemisphere. But slight little problem. There's no more soldiers, French soldiers in the Western Hemisphere because the yellow fever took them over and there was a slave re revolt in Saint Dominique or Dominican Republic. All right, Toussaint Le Overture, a slave, he sees that the French soldiers are dying of the yellow fever, and he overtakes them and kills them off. And then Napoleon's like, "Well, now what am I going to do? Well, I guess I'll just sell all that land." But you think Napoleon secretly believes that he'll get the land back when he gains world domination? So Jefferson offers to buy New Orleans for $7 million, and Napoleon goes, take it all, 
for 15. And Jefferson's like, mm, okay. This is what Napoleon thought he was selling. This is an old map. All right, notice that I think the Baja California Peninsula goes all the way up to Canada. All right, so this is an old map. That's what they thought the world looked like, the Western Hemisphere. It's not too bad. I mean, it's, now we have, you know, aerial shots, and they did a pretty good job, you know, overall. That's what he thought, the pink section in the middle. That's what he thought. Now I'm going to take that pink section, and I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it on this map. Yes, folks, Louisiana Purchase is actually that large. Don't pay attention to the Indiana Territory, whatever. It's a bad map. All right, but the Louisiana Purchase part, it's all that gold part. And this is what he thought he was going to sell. So that pink section, yes, I picked it up and put it on this map. It's not the same thing, but you know I'm getting that, hopefully. All right, so the area that he thought was pink, but he actually sold was that big yellow section. Oh my gosh, I sold that much land. It's like, uh, what's it called? Uh, seller's remorse. You usually have buyer's remorse, but it's like sellers are like, oh, I screwed up. Oh my gosh. Now, what states are impacted by that? All right, so the full states of South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. But the partial states of Louisiana, a little bit of Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota. You know, they're all the partial things. So what are we going to do with this land? I know. We'll send people out there to explore it. Any ideas as to who explores it? Wrong. All right. So Jefferson spends even more money. And he sends three men. You thought only two. All right. He sends three men out to explore that west. And it is Lewis and Clark and some other guy named Zebulon Pike. Never heard of him, did you? You may have heard of Pike's Peak, though. Hmm. So here is William Clark and Meriwether Lewis. They probably grew tired of each other, but they did have other people with them. Helping them out. It's not just those two on their own. All right, so get that out of your head. They also bring along... Sacagawea, right. Sacagawea was her guide, and he, she walked alongside them, or actually led them, for three years, along with her husband. Did you even know she had a husband? Did you know that she had a baby on the trip? Bet you didn't. Now you do. And folks, her husband is named Toussaint Charbonneau. How odd is it that I had to say the word Toussaint in a matter of four or five slides of each other? Toussaint the Overture with the entire rebellion slave revolt of saint dominique and then toussaint charbonneau both revolve around the louisiana purchase both men are french based of course toussaint lay overture is a slave so of course he's going to have a slave name france you know whatever but we also send zebulon pike i have a really weird thing i see historical people and i go wow they really look like an actor all right so bam to me he looks like james woods that's the actor on the right i know you don't know him i'm old it's okay all right so zebulon pike he mostly went south he did have a little short stint up north but he goes off into the south and goes into new mexico or no actually just to mexico and he discovers pike's peak and goes this is my peak all right, so, bam, crazy, wild, wacky stuff. All right, now, we have another scenario. So put it on pause, figure it out. I'm going to explain it, but then you can just go off onto it. So America deals with being bullied. You are President Jefferson. You have just won re-election. Louisiana Purchase was one great deal with the French, but now you are facing problems with the French and the British as well. They are both taking ships and sailors. Yes, impressment once again. What do you do? Put it on pause. Give me a chance. Or give me a guess, I mean. Right! He does C. C? Is that right? C? Not C? C? C, C. All right. So, he says he's going to stop exporting to Europe so the ships are safe and foreign countries will then beg us for our goods. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be happy. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. 
No, it's not. It's called the Embargo Act of 1807, folks. And what is it? Basically, we said no more exports to France and England and basically other countries as well. Um, who was supposed to be hurt? Yes, the foreign countries. And they're supposed to be like, please, oh, please, I'm begging you for your goods. It doesn't happen. All right. Who does get hurt by it? The U.S. merchants, the people who sell goods and our economy starts to tank. Ugh. All right. So why? Well, because we're only selling to ourselves. We can't sell it to other countries. And Americans get really, really angry about this. And they start to do anagrams on the word embargo. If you look at the word embargo backwards, it's oh, grab me. All right. And they have another anagram. And it says go bar um. All right. So go bar um. All right. To prevent. Uh, and then. They are filled with rage, and they go, look at that. It says rage and embargo. It's a mob rage. They start freaking out. They make anagrams to who knows where, you know. Another one they thought of was Game Bro. No, that's not true. All right, or maybe Emo Barge. No, that's not it either. But these three are definite. Now, look at the cartoon. It says, darn it, D slash N, how he nicks them. And the guy on the right goes, oh, this cursed, oh, grab me. All right, the snapping turtle has his butt. It's my favorite political cartoon because it's got a turtle and whatever. He's trying to trade illegally, smuggle, super fine tobacco onto the British ship in the background. And the snapping turtle grabs him by the butt and says, no, you can't do that. It's a bargo act. Question to ponder, folks. Does Jefferson remain true to his constitutional beliefs? Explain your thoughts. Give me some reasons. Jot down some things. It's good for you. He cost him money. He cost America a lot of money. He's a crazy dude, that guy. Probably over $25 million. Just saying. Fourth president comes around. Madison enters the White House. Yes, folks, James Madison was our fourth president, 1809 to 1817, and he's elected in 1808 and Reelected in 1812. Right, I put the years of inauguration, 09 to 17, as his time in office because that's when he serves. There he is, old blue eyes. Now, Madison enters the White House and he has a scenario. You are President Madison. You have just taken office from TJ, Tommy Jeffs. All right, what do you do? Do you keep the Jefferson idea going? Do you decide to go to war? Do you say, I'm going to reopen trade with Europe, except England and France? Do you say, I want to reopen trade with Europe, except England and France? But tell them, whichever one of you stops being mean to me first, I'll be nice and I'll start trading with you again. Tell me what you think. Yes, folks, he does number D. Or a letter D. Or, I have no idea. D? We'll say D. I don't know how it looks on yours. I'm not totally stupid mirror image thing um he actually does say reopen trade with europe except england and france but tell them whichever one of you are stops being mean to us first then i'll trade with you this is called the non-intercourse act the non-intercourse act or macon's bill number two basically you can't put your ships into my harbor unless you're nice to me first all right so that's the deal Scenario number four. Oh, I think this is the fourth one. Uh, scenario number four. You are a member of the Warhawk Congress of 1811. You're tired of England causing problems with trade and pressing sailors and all that stuff. Put it on pause. Take a guess. Which one do you do? Yes! He does all four. Oh my gosh. Do you bet you didn't see that one coming, did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Uh uh. All right, so all four. He does them all. So what do the Warhawks want? They want free trade and sailors' rights. But you're going, wait a second. Why? Because their goods aren't selling. What goods? I'll tell you. All right. Most of these men are from the South and the West, which means that some of them never even saw the ocean before. But they want free trade and sailors' rights. Why would they care about it? Because they're plantation owners, folks. They're losing tons of money because that tobacco is not being sold into Europe. And they're like, yo, we need to sell some tobacco. All right. And bam, 
we want to have a war so we can sell our tobacco and other products all right so that's the dealio so madison enters the war of 1812 this should be our last slide and why because canada folks canada would be a huge prize it should be an easy win we don't have canada so i guess we lost hmm. british impressment believe it or not folks that reason actually ends two days before we declare war but we don't have instagram or snapchat or whatever twitter uh to find that out we don't find that out for another six weeks after the fact it's like oh are we good no you still want to fight us oh, oh okay Ugh. all right and the british they're still in america folks it is 1812 they're still in america back when washington was president he's like get out of here that whole jay's treaty that was 20 years ago folks 20 years has gone by and they're still on the land they're still trading with the native americans Ugh. all right we have to go to war that's the war of 1812 chapter 6 section 4 enjoy it that's about it for now enjoy have fun love you peace out it's only 21 minutes not too bad